Good day everyone! It's me, Teacher Diane. And for this video, we are going to talk about permutations. Are you ready? So what are you waiting for? Grab your ball pen and your notebook and let's get this lesson started. It's always nice to have some photos together with families and friends. Photos reminds us of different memories and stories behind them. In today's generation, we have this word groofy, which means a group of selfie photo taken with a smartphone that contains three or more people. Do you like having a groofy with your family and friends? I like to take goofies too. I remember there was this time where I met my two friends again after a long period of time. We decided to have a groofie on my phone to celebrate this opportunity of seeing each other again. We would like to take many groofies by changing our position one photo after another. How many photos do you think we have in my phone? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We have six photos. Do you know that there is a mathematical concept behind this? Every arrangement is what we call permutation. A permutation is an arrangement of n objects in a definite order. So, whenever we talk about permutations, always remember that the order or the position of objects matters. There are many ways to count the number of permutations. Let me give you some examples. I want to create a three-item true or false test. How many different sets of answers can I have? This is an example of a permutation that requires a repetition. Since in a true or false test, answers may be repeated. So, how many possible permutations of answers can I have? Let us list. TFT or true for number 1, false for number 2, and true for number 3. We have true, true, false, false, true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, true, false, false, all true, and all false. There are eight possible permutations of answers that I can have in this three-item test. Next example. In how many ways can three students arrange themselves in a row for picture-taking? Sounds familiar, right? This example is the same as our example a while ago about Groofy. These are called permutations without repetition. Others call it linear permutations with distinct elements because the objects are arranged in linear order. We know the answer to this problem, right? There are six possible arrangements or permutations. But how do we solve this without listing? Note that there are three students in this problem. Let me draw the three blanks that indicate the position of each student. For the first position, there are three students who can take this position. So, we write three in the first blank. For the second one, since a student has already occupied the first blank, there are only two students who can occupy this position. Therefore, we write 2 on the second blank. For the last blank, there is only one student left to occupy this position. So, we can write 1 on the third blank. Then, all we have to do is to multiply these numbers. 3 times 2 times
times 1 is 6. There are 6 permutations. Let's have some more examples. In how many ways can we arrange the letters in the word peer? This is an example of a distinguishable permutation. Notice that there are two E's in the word peer. So, if we simply interchange the two E's in this particular word, we could see that we still have the same word or same arrangement. Thus, it is counted as one permutation. Listing all the distinct arrangements of letters, we have 12 permutations or 12 ways that we can arrange the letters in the word peer. Let us have the last example to this lesson. In how many ways can we arrange three persons in a round table? This is an example of a circular permutation. Notice that in this problem, the elements are arranged in a circular way. Let us answer the problem. Take note that there are three seats around the table. Let us assign one of the person to a fixed seat and determine the number of ways that the other two persons can be arranged. In this way, we could avoid counting again an arrangement that resulted from a mere rotation. So, we have 1, 2. There are 2 permutations. These are the ways to get the number of permutations. First, permutations that requires repetition, permutations without repetition, or linear permutations with distinct elements. It can also be distinguishable permutations and circular permutations. For the next lesson, we would be having the different formula that can help us easily solve these permutations. I hope that you learned and enjoyed our today's lesson. Again, this is Teacher Diane. Till next time, bye-bye!